it is hotter than we predicted. What's going on? Dr. Michael Mann drops by. Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends and subscribe to, your, to our channel. Uh, my old buddy, Dr. Michael Mann, is with us, a distinguished professor of meteorology, the director of the Earth, Science, uh, Earth System Science Center at Penn State University, member of the National Academy of Sciences, the author of numerous books, including The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy, recipient of the Tyler Prize. His website, Michael Mann with two N's, dot net, and you can tweet him at Michael E. Mann with two N's. Uh, Michael, welcome, or Dr. Mann, welcome back to the program. Um, it's, uh, it's always so glad to have you, uh, so good to have you with us. Um, please describe to us the difference over the years in climate, in, in these predictive models that have to do with climate change and how we can expect our atmosphere to respond to the this constant barrage of carbon that we're throwing into it. Yeah, thanks, Tom. It's always good to be with you. Um, so, you know, the models that we use to uh, project or, or predict future climate changes uh, have been vetted for decades now. Uh, and we have, uh, you know, seen various sorts of exercises and tests of their validity that they have passed with flying colors. Uh, they are able to reproduce uh, quite well the warming that we've seen in recent decades and many of the other changes in climate that we're seeing as a result of that warming. So there's reason to take them quite seriously. Now, there is sort of a spread. Not all climate models predict exactly the same amount of warming as we continue to uh, burn uh, fossil fuels and elevate the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And that's because different models make different assumptions, for example, about the role of uh, phenomena like clouds, they're very small um, compared to the scales that these models are run at. And so they're difficult to resolve. Individual clouds are difficult to resolve in a climate model. And so you have to make certain types of uh, physically based assumptions about, for example, how clouds change in a warming world. And different climate modeling groups make slightly different assumptions that are consistent with the evidence, and they come up with different amounts of warming. Um, so there's a spread, and, and currently what those models tell us is that if we continue uh, with business as usual, that we don't curtail our burning of fossil fuels, we don't transition uh, from fossil fuel burning to renewable energy and decarbonize our civilization, uh, we'll probably see somewhere between 3 and 4 degrees Celsius. So we're talking, you know, 6, 7 degrees of Fahrenheit warming of the planet by the end of the century. Uh, but there's a range. There's some uncertainty, as we just uh, discussed. So the, the, the new models seem to be projecting far more extreme warning than the models were 5 and 10 years ago. Why is that, and what are they predicting? Yeah, so it's interesting. In the latest uh, assessment of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, um, and these assessments are based on uh, the results in, in part of climate modeling efforts by groups around the world. Um, and there are more than 50 different climate models that are run by different groups. And so they come up with some spread of um, the estimated warming, the estimated impacts of climate change from these different models. And what we're seeing in the latest assessment is the models almost fall into two groups. One group that looks sort of like the past generation of climate models uh, will probably see, you know, some, somewhere in the range of three degrees Celsius, five you know, and a half degrees Fahrenheit warming of the planet if we double the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. That's how much warming we'll expect if we double the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. And you've got a fancy term for that that's called the climate sensitivity. And most models say if you double CO2 concentrations relative to pre-industrial levels and given business as usual will be there sometime later this century. Um, most of the models say you probably get about three degrees Celsius warming uh, for that. But there are some models that say, well, no, it might be more like four or even five degrees. And in the latest assessment, there are more models that sort of lean towards those higher numbers. And that has to do, for example, like we just talked about earlier, with how the different models treat clouds. Clouds, uh, the behavior of clouds in a warming climate is a very important uncertainty. And depending on the assumptions you make, and, and there are different reasonable assumptions that different modeling groups make, you come up with a different number. Um, how much does the effect of clouds add to the warming? Different groups come up with different estimates of that. And so some of the groups are saying, you know, that 
climate sensitivity might be closer to, to four or five degrees Celsius based on the results that they're getting. Now, here's the thing, Tom. There are other independent constraints. There are various um, lines of evidence that allow us to sort of assess which climate models are more consistent with the available evidence, with past climates, um, you know, 100 million years ago when dinosaurs roamed the planet um, and the climate was warmer and there were higher CO2 concentrations. We can look at that evidence. We can look at how much the, the models cool uh, in response to a big volcanic eruption. And there are lots of different ways that we can look at the climate models and sort of compare them with different types of observations and get a sense of which models seem to be most, most faithful to the real world. Those sorts of tests seem right now to be pointing towards the lower models, the conventional models, let's say you get about three degrees Celsius for CO2, but two doubling. Most of the evidence seems to say that those models are uh, sort of closer to reality than these newer models that are suggesting more warming. But here's the thing, we can't rule out these new climate model simulations. We can't rule out the possibility that the warming will be more than sort of the conventional estimates have suggested. And that points to the fact that we are making decisions in the face of uncertainty. Yes, there is uncertainty here, but it's not our friend. The uncertainties are such that they tell us that the warming could potentially be quite a bit more than the climate models have been telling us. It's all the more reason to take concerted action now. Yeah, yeah, to say the very least. Uh, how, how, what, what kind of effects, I mean, we're, we're seeing, obviously, you know, we're, we're seeing worse storms, worse droughts, all these kind of, you know, the extremes of weather becoming more extreme. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm catching these news stories about, you know, the, the Siberian, uh, permafrost being on fire and, and, uh, you know, problems in Northern Canada with the permafrost going and wiping out indigenous communities and things. Um, how, how far along are we? How rapidly, you know, what, what can we expect to see when? What, what do the next 10 or 20 years uh, bring in, in your guess, Dr. Mann? Yeah, you know, when temperatures are warmer in Siberia than they are in Florida, uh, you know it's time to start worrying. Um, and there is yeah. indeed plenty of reason um, to, to, to worry that we're already seeing dangerous climate change impacts. We see them you know, our day, daily, uh, you know, newspaper headlines on our television screens, the wildfires in, in, in Siberia, the devastating heat waves here in the United States, um, unprecedented flooding events and superstorms. We're seeing the damaging impacts of climate change play out. And so uh, the very best of scenarios, if we take concerted action now, we can prevent things from getting worse, but we're already stuck with, with the negative impact that we're facing. You know, given the impacts we're seeing now, it's reasonable to imagine that we can sort of develop the infrastructure that we have the, uh, the resilience to deal with the impacts that are already locked in. But if we don't act now and the warming gets greater and more of the ice melts and sea levels start to accelerate and these uh, devastating uh, weather extremes become more common and more profound, well, then pretty soon we're going to exceed our adaptive capacity as a species. And so what this tells us is dangerous climate change has already arrived now. We're seeing it play out, and it's simply a question of how bad we're willing to let it get. Um, there is urgency, but as I like to say, there is agency. There is still time. 